jetty is a little bit like the very first brick that's uh, laid in a foundation. We wanted to start with Lawandi National Park, but people didn't understand the model. They didn't understand the, the proposition, and therefore there was a huge amount of resistance to it. So the Malawian government said to us, why don't you go and test the model and deliver a proof of concept with Majeti? And so then we were faced with that choice of, do we take on an area which literally has no infrastructure in it, has no wildlife in it, has not had a single tourist for, I think, three years prior to our being here. So literally, we're starting at ground zero. Before African parks, it was completely nothing. I remember very well that the, the park was more or like less empty. We didn't even count 100 animals. Quite a number of issues, ranging from poverty, environmental degradation. This park, there was nothing to say, I can say. It was uh, really in a, in a terrible, terrible state. But I don't think we ever uh, doubted that it was possible. Mr. Wadi, who was then the, the senior most staff member, and a broken old blue motorbike. That's all there was. Here we sit underneath the tree in civvies, what are we going to do? We've got 600, 599 animals coming in four months' time, five months' time. How are we going to make this work? That was in April, May. Then we got the fencing team to come in. And by September, we had a game capture team, 14,000 hectares fenced, 599 animals successfully translocated. There was no time to miss a beat. It was powerful conservation in the most wonderful, humbling way. Ethics dictated every move, not economics. It was a glorious, glorious time, a sublime team effort. Everything here is about relationships. They've got to be authentic, they've got to be real, they've got to be honest. Community relations, I think the situation was very, very grim indeed. We had to start from the scratch. So we trot out into the communities, finding out what were the issues, expected to respond to those issues. For instance, education. In each and every school, we have a library that is being supported by African parks. You know, we set up a bursary and supporting the kids in Central School all the way up to university. I had no hope of who will pay school fees for me. But with the coming of the African parks, they brought change in myself because I saw my dreams coming true. A lot of children are benefiting from the protection of Majid Wildlife Reserve. The very real problem in Malawi was deforestation for charcoal. That was our biggest threat. Some years ago, we don't have these trees. And these trees were provided by Majet itself to help us to sustain the environment, to recover the environment which has been lost here. Twenty years down the line, some of those trees that were saplings then have now been able to grow to their full potential and size. Today you go there, you find that the uh, trees are around the school. Kids can sit in the shed. We have uh, some clinics which are constructed by African parks. Before the opening of this facility, people could move a long distance to get medical services. They are now able to receive treatment here. The malaria cases are, are decreasing. Women come here for family planning, so people are able to know the well-being of their bodies. I see the change when the Afghan parks came in. They give power to law enforcement, giving us support, vehicles, opening roads for rangers to do patrols. They taught people around Majete, the communities, 
to surrender their weapons voluntarily. In the first 18 months of this project, we took 400 illegal weapons out of the system. You can only do that when you've got the support from local communities. But when you close one thing, you must sort of substitute what you're taking away. So they give uh, communities around Majete small businesses. Basket weaving, beekeeping has been promoted. Me as a person, it changed my life because I've got a motorbike from beekeeping. Many people have been employed. At the end of the month, they are getting something that they can sustain their lives. 12 years working for African Parks as a mechanic, I am now the supervisor of this workshop. Having the job itself is one of the greatest things. There are so many benefits to protecting Majeti wildlife. Life will never be the same again. If you look at Majeti today, it's got four or five different tourism establishments. A game drive now is as good as you'll find anywhere on the continent. Visitors coming to see the animals, they collect money there at the gate, and the money going to the to their community. The first three years we didn't generate not one dollar. This year Majeti will generate approximately $750,000. Every single species that should be here has been reintroduced. The park is now helping other parks to replenish its wildlife species, which is extremely gratifying. I don't even think African Parks knows the impact of the profound differences it's made to so many people's lives. It's, it's just remarkable. Majete, Wildlife Reserve, is a savior. Majete, it was dead. But now the future of Majete has been brought alive again. The future is very bright.